Hi, my name is Lasse. In this video, we'll talk about why AI is critical right now. So many people say that artificial intelligence is important for different business sectors, but I would say it's not important, it's critical. Uh, not only it will affect one sector, but it will affect every sector. Many years back, I started to notice how Facebook and Google started to focus more on AI. And I was thinking that it's like one thing that they will only apply. But right now, AI will be applied in every sector, in every aspect of our life. And it's safe to say that it will change our life. So that's why here we have nine different reasons why AI is ex extremely important right now. I would say the number one is speed of implementation. What this means is everything is introduced so fast that we will read it when it happened six months ago. And uh, basically, there's only like a handful of people who understand all these implications. And uh, you can think about sectors like banking and finance and so on. There's so much happening simultaneously. It's almost impossible to keep uh, account of what's happening. The same with healthcare. So the AI, the speed of AI implementation is happening extremely, extremely fast. So that's uh, number one. Number two is the potential impacts for the society. So when it will be applied in every different sector, in every business process, and also all aspects of our life, if we think about institutions and politics and so on, that will have a huge impact on, on our society. And it will transform the way we live and so on. And um, in my work, I always want to highlight this fact of the potential impacts for the society. It will be extremely huge and, um, and something that we should really start thinking about it. And myself, I think that this is the area most people should spend time right now, not only thinking how we can code AI and how we can do amazing AI application, which is also okay. But really, the impact for the society will be extremely big. One of the biggest is obviously how we can re-educate people who will be left out of the job market and so on. And then the prior prioritizing of AI by every large tech company. You probably know that Google used to say many years back that they are mobile first company. And now they say that they are AI first company. The same goes with all the big tech companies like uh, Amazon, Facebook, IBM and others, plus all the biggest Chinese companies like Alibaba, Baidu and Tencent. So their number one focus is AI. And basically what they want to do is to spend more on AI research on development so that they can have more power. For, power. And another thing I would like to highlight here is that for us, it's also really important that these companies do not have all the power. That's why we should like democratize AI. For example, the data that Google has or Baidu has in China is almost like dangerous for one company to decide what to do with that data. Some of that data should be free for everybody to use uh, their, and do their own applications and algorithms okay then number four the shortage of knowledge workers um what will happen in the short term future is that we will need a lot of data scientists a lot of machine learning experts and people who understand deep learning and so on because companies will hire that kind of people it's also safe to say that like in 10 years or seven years ai will know how to make its own code so um, therefore, I do recommend for people who only want to study coding that they would also study other things because those other human things will be in high demand in the future. But in the short term, there will be knowledge, there will be shortage of knowledge workers. I also saw interesting statistics that said that in Europe, there is uh, 800,000 uh, 800, jobs that are not able to be fulfilled. And these are digital economy jobs. They would be like, let's say, architects who understand technology or healthcare professionals who understand technology and so on. So 
there's a huge uh, thing that institutions and universities should also work quickly on that. Then competitive advantages for companies who first apply AI correctly. Obviously, this is something that every company and every industry are now focusing. But as you can see, I have numbered it number five, not number one, like everybody else is saying. But it's true that AI will not only help companies, it will also help the GDP of the nation states. It's highly likely that that will grow. But at the same time, we have to remember that GDP is not like an indicator of how well one country is going because there's a lot of suffering and, and there's a lot of isolations and there's other problems and challenges that, that are happening at the same time. But it's safe to say that those companies who spend time to apply AI will quite highly likely to uh, have success in the future. Then we have the legal implications worldwide. This is really big in Europe now that the, we have the data regulation law. And with this, I would like to say that uh, try to encourage every politicians to understand as much about the digital developments and the developments of new technologies, because those politicians will make important decisions three years from now, five years from now. And if they don't know exactly the implications, um, it's, it's not really good thing. So therefore there are some experts that say that every politicians in Europe should make like a digital technology exam before they, they start taking, uh, making decisions, but the legal implications worldwide are, are extremely huge. Then we have the ethical development again here. Uh, I would like to highlight that Europe is kind of like leading this. Uh, in Europe, we have a lot of like humanists, we have a lot of philosophers, and we have a history of understanding kind of like what's good for humans. And uh, therefore, it's highly likely that this will not happen from China and it will not happen from US. You, in the US, the number one goal is to make more money and profit for stake uh, for shareholders of the company. And in China, the number one thing is to make the Chinese government more powerful. And therefore, this ethical development uh, should happen in Europe. European Union is already working for it. And also uh, Finnish government is, is working for that as well. Then we have uh, another interesting challenge, which is the communication of advantages and opportunities. AI will give huge opportunities, for example, for students and young people who understand how to apply AI in different sectors. But many times they don't hear this message or, or, or the, this message is not shared correctly. So uh, that's quite sad and, um, and something we should all do something. And uh, there's a growing concern about populism and social unrest that will happen um, where uh, certain political parties and, and so on will use this situation and, and will uh, kind of like disseminate uh, misinformation and so on. So that's why I uh, do recommend to share these opportunities and advantages that AI will give to society and everybody really, really widely. And lastly, there should be a good collaboration between private and public sectors. Uh, this is something that Finland is quite good at doing. And for example, US is, is not really good at doing, but both, we need both public and private sector to work together with this. And therefore governments in every country should understand that AI is important opportunity to increase the effectiveness and let's say the, the um, how companies operate and their success. But at the same time, we should uh, think about some kind of rules and regulations when it comes to ethic, ethics, and we should also think about concerns like privacy. Okay, so uh, here were the nine things. Uh, now think about w out of these nine, what would be the most important for you and your work that you would like to uh, find out more information.